Good morning, 10th, 11th grade geometry class. Uh, everybody did an excellent job on their self-test and pace test for 1117. Congratulations. Now you get the reward. You get to move on to pace 1118. Uh, some of you guys may be missing your pace when we gave them out a couple weeks ago. Some of you were not in class. You need to make sure you contact me. Come pick those paces up. This way you can make sure uh, that you are keeping up with the class. And so, again, make sure your homework assignments are turned in. Uh, every time they're late, it's 10 points off. And so um, it's very important to make sure you get your checkups in on time, your quizzes, also your homework. And so be up, make sure you're up to date on that. And this way you have no issues or no problems. We're going to begin at pace 1118. Uh, we're going to look at page number one tonight. And page number one, as we look at the introduction, and we'll get in through, um, you know, at least to page six or seven is the kind of the goal today. So let's look at the goals for pace 1118 to learn how to find the perimeter of a polygon. And so we want to make sure by the end of the pace that we know how to find the perimeter. Uh, secondly, to find the area of a rectangle, parallelogram, triangle, rhombus, and trapezoid. Thirdly, to learn about a polyhedron. Fourthly, to find the lateral area and total area of a prism, a pyramid, a cylinder, a cone, and a sphere. And to find the volume of a prism, a pyramid, a cylinder, a cone, and sphere. So some of these principles that we're going to learn this page are already familiar with. Now, I've been doing some of these things for years and so this might be a good refreshing course, a good reminder for many of you. And so we're going to look at page number two now. Page number two in your textbook. Be sure you copy out your handbooks. Uh, pull out your handbook. Make sure you copy your handbooks in. I'll be asking you uh, to turn those in occasionally to making sure that you're filling those out. And then also make sure you have your highlighter to highlight any particular important postulates, theorems, and formulas. You're going to have to memorize all your formulas uh, from this pace as well. So let's look at the area and volume. Page number two, area and volume. The perimeter of a polygon. The perimeter of a polygon is the distance around a polygon or the sum of the lengths of the sides of a polygon. And so two particular polygons that we're going to be looking at here is a rectangle and a square. And so a rectangle, here we have the length and width. And since we have two lengths and two widths, the formula for the perimeter of a rectangle would be P equals 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. All right, 2 times the length or 2 times the width. Or we can go P equals 2 times length plus width. You could write it that way. You need to highlight that. That's very important to memorize. Again, many of you already uh, may already know that. Uh, but we're, we have perimeter equals 2 times length plus 2 times the width. And then the perimeter of a square, since all the sides of a square are the same length, since they are equal, we're just going to go P equals 4 times S. So we have four sides, right? So four times the length of the sides there. So make sure of that. Now, thirdly, right below that second sentence there on page number two, you'll see all the sides of a regular polygon are the same length. If n is the number of sides and s is the length of the side, the perimeter of a regular polygon is p equals n s. And so if we have an octagon, uh, eight, uh, N would be the number of sides, so an octagon is an eight-sided polygon, and S would be the length of each side, and you just simply go eight times whatever the length of the side is. So uh, these three formulas in particular, you need to highlight, make sure you know, um, so you can write those in. Let's look at the bottom page, number two, number four, okay? Each side of a regular hexagon is nine centimeters, the perimeter of the hexagon is, now, what's a hexagon? How about we have Emmy? Uh, M, what is a hexagon? How many sides does a hexagon have? Good, six. So we would say the perimeter of a hexagon is six times, and then notice we have each side of a regular hexagon is nine centimeters, and then six times nine centimeters would be, 54 centimeters, 54 
centimeters, okay? Let's look at number six, six, okay? What is the cost of molding for a rectangular room four meters by five meters? If the molding costs $2.95 per meter. Now we're looking at a rectangular room and so we have the length of the room is five meters. Okay, let's just say this is the room, so we have five meters, and the width of the room is four meters. So first thing we want to do is we want to find out what the, uh, what the perimeter around the room is. Once we figure that out, we can multiply it by uh, the price there. So uh, let's get our calculators out. So we have perimeter equals two times the length, which is two times five centimeters, okay, plus two times four meters okay we just simply do our math here and so 2 times 5 is 10 meters plus 2 times 4 is 8 meters all right so 10 meters plus 8 meters is 18 meters 18 meters now we want to find the question is what is the cost of molding for a rectangular room if the cost is 295 per meter how about we have Caleb hope you're feeling well uh, Caleb why don't you get your calculator out and let's go 18 times two dollars and 95 cents and get your calculator out we'll wait for you as you solve that two dollars and 95 cents the cost would be how about we have Gabe Panachetti gave you fill uh, follow up. We have fifty three dollars and ten cents. Very good, good job there. So um, make sure you do number five and number seven. You will do that tonight for homework. Turn the page, page number three. The area of a polygon. A triangular region consists of a triangle and its interior. Notice the triangular regions below. So if you look in your book, page number three, you'll notice here, okay, we have triangular, the triangular regions. They're shaped like triangles. A polygonal region consists of a polygon and its interior. A polygonal region is composed of, a triang of triangular regions. Observe the polygon regions below. Again, I want to draw your attention. You'll see here uh, we have polygons, and then inside the polygons, notice the lines that are seg segmented, and those lines form triangular regions. Triangular regions, okay? So inside the major polygon, we have triangular regions. Now, it leads us to postulate number 30. And, um, well, before we get to postulate 30, right above that sentence there, right above that postulate, that box, you'll see a very important sentence I make sure I want you to get. It says, notice that the triangular regions intersect each other only at a point or segment. These regions are called non-overlapping triangular regions. Every polygonal region consists of a finite number of triangular regions. And so, if again, if you draw your attention here, you'll see that the segments are connected to points or intersections, or we would say maybe vertices. And you'll see the, the segments there are connected to vertices. And so that's very important to understand as we go on. This leads us to postulate 30. The area of a polygonal region, the area of a polygonal region is the sum of the areas of the non-overlapping triangular regions into which it may be divided. So, let's look at number two. We want to divide, all right? We want to use triangulation to divide these polygons. So, triangulation is basically taking this polygon here and dividing it into triangular regions. Okay, so when we take a polygon, we divide that into polygonal, into triangular regions. That is called triangulation. So quickly, all right, let's look at this here. We have uh, a rectangle here, okay? And the question is, use triangulation to divide these polygons. So for number two, if you look at number two here, so if you take from one vertex to the other vertex, Remember, they're non-intersecting or non-overlapping, so we only have one line here, and so we divide this polygon into two triangular regions. Again, that is called triangulation, okay? Look at number three. Look at number three. 
I have number three here on the board. We want to divide that into triangular regions. So uh, again, vertices and non-overlapping. So we have one vertex, vertex here, right? And we got a vertex there, so we connect that, okay? Now, does anyone see another vertex or vertex? Good, we can go from here all the way down there. And there you go, that is called triangulation. That is separating, a dividing a polygon or region into three or four triangular regions. That is called triangulation. You could do number four uh, on your own. Let's pick up on page four. Page number four, <clears throat> we're gonna erase this. Okay, number four. This is page four here. All right, notice postulate 31 and theorem 98. You want to highlight both of these, postulate 31 and theorem 98, okay? The area of a rectangle is the product of the length of the base and the length of the altitude to that base. Again, you can use length times width. It doesn't have to be B times H. It could be length times width. Air equals length times width. Um, but we want to make sure that you highlight postulate 31, which is the area of a rectangle. Again, base times height, or if you want to use length times width, uh, that's fine. Okay. Now, notice here theorem 91. Okay, theorem 90, or excuse me, theorem 98. The area of a square is the square of the length of the side. So if we want to find the area of a square, okay, we just simply go side squared. Now notice here, okay, when we're dealing with the area, the answer will always be in square units. Square units, okay? So if I have a rectangle here, Okay, basically let's say if we want to take your living room and we want to put carpet tiles down or ceramic tiles down, and so you want to find out how many tiles you need to fill that room. You would simply take the length and you would times it by the width and you would find out how many square tiles, okay, how many square tiles would fit inside the room. So your answer would be square units. You want to make sure that you, you're very technical and very specific with that. Anytime we're doing the area, it's always two dimensions and therefore the answer will always be in square units. So let's go to page number five and let's practice, okay? Page number five, let's practice here. Let's look at number five, okay? We're gonna do the odds on this page. Number five. We have a square, okay? If the side is one millimeter, what is the area of the square? All, all you would need to do is simply take your formula, all right? We know the side is one, right? So we would go one millimeter. We would square that, and obviously, class, that's not one times two, that's one times one, and we would have one, and my answer always must be in square units, so my answer would be one millimeter squared, okay? Let's look at number seven. Number seven, all right? We have S equals 1.5 meters. So S equals 1.5 meters. Again, we just plug that into our area formula. So the area equals 1.5 meters squared. So get your calculator out. 1.5 meters squared would be 1.5 times uh, 1.5, which would be 2.25. 2.25, I hope you get that. And then obviously our answer is in, um, oh, excuse me, it's in centimeters, not meters. Centimeters, so that would be 2.25 centimeters squared, okay? Now, let's look at number nine. Number nine. Number nine, we have a rectangle. So, we have the base is 8 centimeters and the height is 4.5 centimeters. Find the area. Again, the area for a rectangle would be simply the base times the height. And so, the base is 8 centimeters times the height, which is 
4.5 centimeters. Okay, get your calculator out. How about we have Josh Baruch give me the answer, and then we'll have your sister Katie Baruch follow up. All right, so 8 centimeters times 4.5 centimeters. We have, good, 36 centimeters squared. All right, again, making sure your answer is in square units. Let's look at number 11. Number 11, okay? Let's do, let's do some practical applications of these formulas. A basketball court is 29 meters long and 15 meters wide. Find its area. So, Fausto, good to see you, Fausto. Uh, what is the shape of a basketball court? And then we'll have Gianna, you follow up. It is a rectangle, very good. So what is the formula to find the area of a rectangle? Excellent, area equals base times height. So we're just simply going to plug here, all right? So area equals 29 meters times the height or the width, which would be 15 meters, all right? Get your calculator out. 29 times 15 is 400 and 35 meters squared. 435 meters squared. Very good. Let's do number 13 together. If, okay, well, let's draw this here. All right. Okay, if the diagonal rectangle is 17 centimeters and one side is 15 centimeters, find the area of the rectangle. So let's draw a rectangle here. Okay, we definitely have a uh, diagonal, okay, which is 17 centimeters, and one side is 15 centimeters, find the area of the rectangle. Now, okay, how do I find the length of the other side? See, it's very important. How do I find the length of this side? Well, when we have a rectangle, we know that a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. So class, that makes this what type of triangle? How about we have Hannah give me the answer there and then we'll have Joe, you follow up. We have a right triangle, very good. And if I wanna find the lengths of the sides of a right triangle, we just learned this last pace, all right, Preston, what formula do I use in order to find the length of the sides of a triangle? And then how about we have Katie Strzelecki. Hey, Kate, hope you're doing well. You follow up. Good. The Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem. So we know that the uh, hypotenuse is opposite of the right angle. So we know we have 17 squared is equal to a squared plus 15 squared. All right, so let's get our calculators out. We'll work on uh, this one together. So what do we have? 17 squared is, get your calculator out, we have 289. Excellent. All right, equals a squared plus, and then 15 times 15 class would be 225. Okay, so now let's solve. We want to get a squared by itself, so we're going to subtract 225 from both sides. So we have a squared is equal to, and then 289 minus 225 is simply 64. Now I've got to get a by itself, so in order to get rid of the exponent, I need to find the square root of both sides. So a equals, and the square root of 64 is... Eight. Now, that's not the answer. Now we have the length of the side of the triangle. So here's the question. What is the area of the rectangle? Now that we have the base and the base and the height, we're able now to decipher. So, all right, so the area of a rectangle is base times height, which we have now is 15 centimeters times eight centimeters. Okay, get your calculator out. And how about we have Chris Robb. How you doing, Chris? Good to see you. Chris, we have 
15 centimeters times 8 centimeters. Get your calculator out. What do we have for the answer? Good. 120 centimeters squared. So here we see the application of what we learned the last pace and then applying it to this pace. Very good. Let's go on here. Let's look at page number. Let's look at number 15. Number 15. Okay. ABCD is a rectangle with diagonal BD. All right. So here we have rectangle. We're going to call this A, B, C, D. And we have a rectangle uh, or diagonal, excuse me, BD. If AB is 12 meters and AD is 9 meters, what is the area of triangle BAD? Now we know, okay, that we have a diagonal divides a rectangle into two congruent triangle. So here we go. Okay. So the area equals base times. Let's find, let's first find the area of the rectangle here. Okay. So area equals base times height, which is, okay. All right. 12 meters times nine meters. We have 108 meters squared, 108 meters squared. Now what we want to do is we want to find the area of a rectangle. I don't know if you remember what the area of a rectangle is. The area of a rectangle is area equals one half of 108 meters squared. Remember, what does this diagonal do? It divides a rectangle into two congruent triangles. So simply, we divide it, multiply this by one half, and then one half of 108 simply is 54 meters squared. 54 meters squared, all right? So let's look at number 17. Number 17 together, as we're doing, we're just, all we're doing, class, is we're just practicing our area of a rectangle, area of a square. Okay, let's uh, clear off our board. Number, nine, number 17, find the area of a square inscribed in a circle with a radius of eight centimeters. Okay, so, all right, we have a circle and then we wanna inscribe a square okay we want to inscribe a square in the circle and we have the circle has a radius of eight centimeters now let's look at the hint what does the hint state the diagonal creates an isosceles right triangle so we have okay this is the center here right we have a center there and we could say that All right, and then we're just going to simply extend this because we have, that's the center, this is our radius, and we have a radius is eight centimeters. The diagonal creates an isosceles right triangle. Does anyone remember last pace? What, what is an isosceles right triangle? How about we have uh, Liam? Good to see you, Liam. Uh, what's, the, what's an isosceles right triangle? And then how about we have Brandon Haynes, good to see you, Brandon. How about you follow up? An isosceles right triangle simply is a right triangle that has two congruent sides. Very good, and two congruent sides. So what we want to do here, does anyone remember how to find the length of the third side? So let's let's look at this here, okay? So we have, if, the cent if this is the radius from here to here is eight, what would be the diameter? How about we have Emmy and then uh, Chris Robb, you follow up. The diameter would be 16. Very good. That would give us the hypotenuse. Now, we want to find the length of the leg. Does anyone remember how to find the length of the, uh, of the legs with an isosceles right triangle? Hint, we learned this last pace. 
Very good. C is equal to this A times the square root of 2. Already learning, using, and applying what we learned in the last page. Very good. So we know C is 16. Let's uh, correct this here. All right, let's get A by itself class. So we want to divide by the square root of 2. So that leaves me A equals 16 to the square root of 2. Now, what is wrong with that problem? Josh Baruch and then Katie Baruch, you follow up. What do we have here? Good. You cannot have a radical in the denominator. We need to rationalize that denominator. Joe, what way can we do that? And then Bobby Huntlock. Bob, you follow up. Good. We want to multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 2. Very good. Which now we have, I'm just going to bring it down here, okay? So 16 times the square root of 2 over the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is, Gabriel, give me the answer. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. Very good, Gabe. Now what's the square root of 4? Follow up. Gianna, it is 2. Excellent. Now, can we reduce 16 over 2? Can we reduce that fraction? How about we have Preston Kluska? Good to see you, Preston. How about we reduce that? What do we have? Excellent. We have 8 to the square root of 2. Now, since this is an isosceles right triangle, we know that if one side is 8 to the square root of 2, we know the other side is 8 to the square root of 2. Now that we know that, now let's go back to the problem. What's the original question? Find the area of the square. So we know, whoops, if this is a square, it's all the same. So the area of a square is 8 to the square root of 2 squared. 8 to the square root of 2 squared. Now, what is that? So what does that uh, exponent do here? Okay, we have an exponent. What does that do inside the parenthesis? Uh, how about we have Hannah? Give me that and then uh, we'll have um, Caleb Tomlinson. You follow up. What does this exponent do? Good. We square the, eight, the whole number, which is 64, and we remove the radical times 2. And then so 64 times 2 gives me what as the answer? 64 times 2 gives me, again, good, 128. And again, our units, since our units are in, uh, excuse me, our units are in centimeters. We have 128 centimeters squared. Good job. Good job there. Uh, let's do one more together here. One more together. All right. We're going to go number 19. Number 19. Okay. Let's, let's erase this here. All right. Number 19 states a rectangle whose altitude is 8 kilometers and whose area is 96 kilometers squared is inscribed in a circle. Find the diameter of the circle. All right, so let's see here. Yeah, not a good circle. All right, we have, okay, all right, we have a, okay, we have a rectangle here and we know that the altitude is, or the width would be eight kilometers, and we have a um, area which is 96. So the area, I'm just going to put it here, area equals 96 kilometers squared. Find the length of the diameter, right? Let's find the length of the diameter. So here we go. Let's work this out together. The first thing we want to do now is we want to solve. Before we can find the area of the, the length of the diameter, we need to find the length of the side of the rectangle. 
So again, all we need to do is use the formula for the rectangle and then just plug in the numbers and solve for the unknown. So we have in the formula, we have area. So the area is 96 kilometers squared equals, okay, we have the height, which is the altitude. We do not have the base. So we're going to go B times 8 kilometers. All right, so... B times 8 kilometers would be simply 8 kilometers B. Now, class, how do I get 8, or excuse me, how do I get the letter B by itself? How do I get the letter B by itself, Liam? What do I need to do? And how about we have Dave Weber. You follow up, Dave. Good to see you, Dave. All right, so we have, very good, divide both sides by 8 kilometers. So B is equal to, that cancels out, so 96 divided by 8 is simply 12, 12 kilometers. Now, okay, again class, what is a rectangle? How about we have Gianna, what is the definition of a rectangle? The definition of a rectangle is how about we have had a follow-up? It is a parallelogram with four right angles. So if these are the legs of a right triangle, Gabriel, then Brandon, you follow up. If these are the legs of a right triangle, what do we have here? Very good. This is the hypotenuse. Now, Katie Strzelecki, wake up, Kate. Don't be snoozing on me. Kate, how do I find the lengths of the sides of a right triangle? What, what, what equation can we use? And then how about we have Caleb Tomlinson, you follow up? The Pythagorean theorem, good. So C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Since we're looking for the hypotenuse, we have C squared equals, okay, 8 kilometers squared plus 12 kilometers squared. So we have 64 kilometers squared plus 144 kilometers squared. All right, so 64 plus 144, what do we have? Chris Robb, give me the answer. And then Bobby Huntlock, you follow up. We have 208 kilometers squared. Good, Joe, bring us home. All right, how do I solve now for C? Excellent, we want to find the square root of both sides. And then we have C equals, and the square root of 208 is... We want to make sure we round off the two decimal places. 14.42 kilometers. So there is the length of your hypotenuse. All right, we have time for just simply one more problem. We're going to do number 21 together. And then we'll close our class for the morning. All right, 21. A rectangle, rectangular field, whose width is 7 meters, okay, so rectangular field, we have a width of 7 meters, and a non-adjacent square field, whose side is 14 meters, have equal areas. Find the perimeter of each field to determine how much fencing is required to enclose both fields, to enclose both fields. So uh, all we want to do here is simply find the area of the square find the area of our rectangle, and then we'll just simply add the two together. Okay, so uh, we have, uh, let me see here, the area of the square is a non-adjacent square field whose side is 14 meters. Okay, so, all right, let's just say here. Okay, what am I, what am I going to, what am I going to need here? Okay, so, Let's find the area of, a, of the square, okay? So the area of a square is area equals 14 meters squared, and 14 times 14 gives me the answer of 196 
meters squared. Okay, 196 meters squared. And, well, let me do it this way. Um, let's see. Let's say, wait, hold on, I'm sorry. Let me read this again. A rectangular field whose width is seven meters and, okay. All right, let's see, this is uh, a square that's 14 meters. All right, now let's find the area of the square, uh, of, the, of the rectangle. So we have the length and the width. So the length is 14, the width is seven meters. So simply we're just gonna go, um, area is base times height. So uh, four, 14 times Seven is simply, oh, forgive me, I, don't, I messed this up. Let me read, read this again. It's non-adjacent, I'm sorry. It's a non-adjacent square field. So uh, remember the word adjacent means common vertex, common side. So uh, we're just gonna put a non-adjacent square field here. All right, so that is seven meters. And then for the, okay, so here we go. All right, so area equals base times height. So if the area is 96, 196 meters squared equals, all right, the base times seven meters. So we have seven meters B, all right, 196 meters squared. Divide both sides by seven. All right, so we have, B equals 196 divided by 7 is 28 meters. 28 meters. I'm going to take that 28 meters. Now we want to find the length around the rectangle and then around the square. And so 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. Uh, so we have um, printer equals 2 times 28 plus two times seven. So two times 28 is 56 plus 14. And the perimeter is 56 plus 14 is 70 meters. The perimeter for the square is four times S, which is simply four times 14, which equals 56 meters. Now I take my total for the rectangle, for the square, add them up, and that gives me my total amount, which is 70 plus 56, which simply is 126 meters of fencing that you'll need. Now, tonight for homework, what I want you to do is I want you to finish the evens on page five and six, all right? Page five and six, and then finish page uh, number three as well. Uh, we'll see you on Tuesday. Have a great and safe weekend.